Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. This video, we're gonna be talking about creating methods. Monday.com is your visual project management solution. This is the tool that allows you to see where every task or project stands with a single glance. With a fully customizable interface, you can create the exact workflow that you need for you and your team to get stuff done. Monday.com is available on mobile and integrates well with some of the most popular tools out there. So get your life in order by giving it a try for free. Link in the description. So throughout this video, we've worked with methods. We may have created some of our own, but now we're going to be putting a method inside of our class. So this is where things get really custom and allow us to be very specific about how we want to structure our application. So what kind of method are, oh, first off, what is a method? Well, this is an example of a method right here. This is an example of a method right here. They're basically a giant body of statements that are executed. So we create a method and then we can invoke that method like we do here. So that is what a method is. It's also known as a function in other programming languages. So that's what we're gonna be creating in this video. So what kind of method are we gonna be creating? Well, right now we have a very simple console.write line and that's fine, but what if we wanted to do something maybe mm, a little bit more custom? Well, let's say we were in here and let's say the first one outputted the first name and then the next one outputted the the last name. And you know, if we had numerous properties, we could make some complex console write line to basically dump the, the object to the console. And this would be useful if we're, well, it's probably not the best technical way to do debugging because you know, there's debug tools, but sometimes it's just nice and helpful to output particular values to the console so we can see how they progress through the application. Best practices, hmm, you should probably learn the debug tools. But in this situation, the, the output might be useful for something other than debugging. So for example, if we're building an application and the user of the application wants to get a ton of information about a particular thing, well, we might create some complex series of console.write lines to give them that information. And if it's not console.write lines, it might be something very similar, such as making them appear inside of a web application or whatever it is. We're just using console.write lines as the basis. So enough of that. What we're gonna be doing is we're basically going to encapsulate a series of console.write lines into one method call. So what we're gonna do is we're going to cut these or copy and paste, whatever you prefer, and go into our class and we're going to create a method. And it needs to be defined within the class curly braces and it's going to be void because it's not gonna return anything. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna call this output. Now by convention, methods start with a capital letter and this is the structure of how to create one. We're gonna paste that code in here and when you go back to your program, you're going to have a little issue. Well, first, we have this me.firstName, and you can see me does not exist in the current context. We no longer refer to the very specific object, but rather keep it more general because this is gonna be used for any of the user objects. So we get rid of that object call right there, and that's the first thing. The next thing is when we try to invoke this method, it's not gonna show up. So we see me dot, and you see there's nothing there about output. So to fix this, we need to make sure we prefix it with public, which I've been careful to do for all of our, our, all of our stuff so far. So when we prefix that with public, we should be able to go over here and say me dot output and invoke it like so. Let's dot net run, see what we get. And you can see we get Caleb on the first line and Curry on the second line. So that is how we create a void method. In the next video, we're going to be customizing this method, making things a little bit more interesting. So I'll see you then.